everyone. Pardon my sweatiness. Uh, I got home from Midland literally a couple hours ago, and the first thing I did was climb up on the roof of the RV because yesterday my air conditioner started to act up. Uh, what was happening is, you know, you flick on the thermostat, you set the temperature, and normally once it hits the temperature you have it set to, the air conditioner turns off, then waits for things to warm up, and then it turns back on again, cools things down, turns off again. Okay, that's how thermostats work. Uh, however, what I was noticing was the fan would turn off, but the compressor wouldn't. You know, the air conditioner would continue to mm, which is not good. We'll close this vent so it's not noisy. There we go. Um, so even if I turned the thermostat off completely, disconnected the wires, nothing would turn it off uh, except for going into the back and turning off the breaker. Uh, fortunately, this RV has one breaker for the air, specifically for the air conditioner, so I was able to just click it off and everything else was fine. However, something is wrong. Uh, did a little research and most of the problems you come up with, most of the problems that people talk about are air conditioners not running, compressors not turning on. Uh, or the air conditioner just blows warm air because the air compressor doesn't turn on. And usually in that situation, it's what's called the capacitor, which is a little cylindrical shaped thing up there that uh, provides power to a uh, startup power because it takes a little more energy to start up than it does to run continuously. Anywho, uh, pardon me, I'm out of breath. Um, so most of the videos and stuff I found online were all about replacing the capacitor to get the thing to start. There was nothing about getting it to stop. However, I was able to do a little Google research and what we found, what I found out from that was it's the likely, the likely culprit is the relay, uh, which powers the thing. Basically, it's an on off switch connected to the con main control panel that tells the compressor when to turn on and when to turn off. And sometimes those things can get stuck on. Uh, and then the thing won't shut off, which is exactly what I believe happened. <clears throat> so, first thing I did was climb up on top and I took the shroud off of the air conditioner. Just four simple screws, uh, one in each corner, took it off. I found the compressor and I followed the wires. And I, the wires led me to the capacitors. The capacitors are not my issue, so I followed the wires still further. Ex fully expecting the control panel and the relays to all be up there under the shroud. But they're not, actually. I followed the wires down back inside and I will turn the camera around real quick and show you what I found. All right, so whoop, let's break my neck here. All right, so here's the internal thing that that's the sky you're looking at here. Um, these are the wires here that lead back inside. This is what powers pretty much everything. And the wires came through that hole right there and went in there. And that is where the electrical box was. And so I had to pull it out and I took the cover off of it uh, by the way, it was stuck. I wasn't 100% certain that I had to, that I was able to just pull it out. I wasn't sure what was going on, but with a little, br little bit of persistence and uh, brute force, I was able to get it out. Anyway, um, this blue wire here, according to the schematic, here, actually this schematic is right here. Let me show you. Let me get some light in here. Sorry. Click on. No, that didn't help at all. All right, here's the schematic for the relay board. Let me see if I can show you how this works. Uh, let's see. Electrical connection. Uh, furnace. No, we don't have furnace. Do, 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 do. Oh, come on now. White, black, green, blue, black. All right. Well, I can't really tell from this. It's not very clear on here. Anyway, to heck with that. I, uh, I I did my own research online with schematics and so forth, and I found and this wire you can see this blue wire continues all the way to the compressor itself, and this is likely a, a ground wire or something, but this is going to be the relay for the compressor, and so basically this is an on-off switch, and when the power is shut off and everything, this should be off, which means there should be no connection between these two. However, when I used my little my little tester thingy here, and I'll show you if I can do it one-handed. You take these little things together. Ah. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to hold my phone and do this at the same time. So I've got it set to ohms, which tests what's called continuity. Continuity basically is a fancy word for a connection. So basically what you do is you take these little tester needles here 
and if some, you put one on one and one on the other, and when they touch together, you get, well, when they touch together, okay, it was working five seconds ago, what the heck, I think, it's, whoa, man, I can't make anything work right, set to ohms, touch the two together, okay, now my stupid tester is not going to work, all right, anyway, the point is, when I touch these terminals together, the tester, the needle went all the way to the end, which means these two have a connection. There's continuity between them, which means they're connected through the relay, which means the relay is stuck closed, as in the on position. Uh, so this relay needs to be replaced. The question is, can I get this relay off this control panel? Or is it glued on or something? Honestly, I have no idea. Um, it's possible I'll have to replace the whole control panel. So, yeah. The next step is to see what I can do with this. So I will be right back with you in a second. All right, so I got the control panel disconnected from the box and uh, the relay is soldered on. Now somebody with good electronic skills could probably replace it and solder on a new one. Um, unfortunately, I suck with this sort of thing, so I'm not even gonna try. Um, I am going to replace the whole control panel so I got to find the model number and order a new one and hope it gets here by Monday because I'm going to Tawas for six days and I really don't want to be without an air conditioner that whole time. Okay, I will get back to you when I get the new part. Alrighty folks, so it's been a couple of days and I got the new relay board right here. Uh, it's a different color. But you can, if you look closely side by side, if I can, there we go. They are identical for the most part. You got the relays in the same positions. You got the various fuses and uh, et cetera, et cetera, plugs all the same. It should work just fine. Now, uh, I'm going to show you real quick how, if you have a similar problem, how to find the right board here. Um, first of all, you got to find the model number of your particular air conditioner. This one is a Dometic dual therm ducted i believe it's called a penguin is the model name however what you want to look for is right here the model number this is unique to the specific model that you have because each model may look the same but they aren't all the same um, so every air conditioner will have a model number on it it'll depend on what brand you have as to where the model number is located this one is on the underside uh, some of them may be under the shroud up on top. There are four major players in the roof, the RV roof air conditioner game. If I am correct, I believe it is Dometic or Duotherm, which is what this is. Uh, Coleman, GE, and I think Norcold also makes air conditioners. Um, so anyway, once you find the model number, you call up the company that made your air conditioner and they should be able to give you the part number for your relay board. Uh, this one also had a part number for this entire box, which is right here. So that's the part number for this entire box if you wanted to just order the whole box and simply splice the wires. But I decided to just replace the board itself and keep the original box. Um, I paid to have the new one overnighted because it's Saturday right now and Monday morning we're leaving for Tawa State Park for six days. And I wanted to have this done before we left. So... The next thing I'm going to do is unplug all these different plugs and swap the board. All right, before I install the new board, I pulled the old one and I want to show you better what I was talking about as far as diagnosing this issue, problem, excuse me. Um, I got this thing to finally work. So anyway, we're testing the ohms, which is to test continuity as in a connection. So if we touch these two needles together, Oop, if I can do it with one hand. There we go. See how the needle pegs all the way to the end? If I disconnect, reconnect, disconnect, reconnect. So basically all this is doing is measuring connectivity between two points. Okay? So if we take these needles, again, doing with one hand, and we touch one to each of these terminals, boom, connectivity, continuity. Disconnect, reconnect. Disconnect, reconnect. See? That tells me that there is 
these two terminals are connected together. And this is essentially an on-off switch for the compressor and the air conditioner. This should not be connected when there's no power. So this relay has broken in the connected position and won't turn off. Now the new one, if we can do this, touch the two terminals together, nothing. See, nothing. This is the way it's supposed to be when there's no power, see? So that's how I have diagnosed this to be the problem. And again, this is soldered on. You can see how it's all connected together. So again, somebody with significant electronic skills could probably remove it and solder on a new one, but it's just not worth the hassle to me. So now I just take this new one and install it. Okay, I got everything put back together except for the, uh, the cover on the bottom. Actually, it was sort of a blessing in disguise that this thing broke because I found out all four of these bolts that hold the air conditioner to the ceiling or to the roof were loose, like really loose, which is very bad, can cause water leaks and so forth. In fact, there may have already been some. There's some water spots on this carpet here and looks like there's some water spots on this wood, although it's not rotten, fortunately. So, anywho, I got the RV plugged in. The next thing is to come back here and turn on the main breaker for the air conditioner, which is right here. As soon as we click this on, we'll know whether or not this is really gonna work, because before, as soon as I click this on, the compressor would start up, even with the thermostat turned off, which obviously shouldn't happen. So the moment I click this on, if we don't hear a rumbling noise from the air conditioner, we'll know I was correct. Here we go. So far, so good. No noise. No nothing. Next thing to do is come over here. Turn this back down to 70, let's say. And click it on. Here we go. Please work. Here we go. She works if I can feel the air getting sucked in through these intake vents. And coming out here as it's supposed to. All right, I'll leave it on for a few minutes and make sure it gets cold, which I can't imagine it won't. I hear the compressor going, but I'll check back with you in a couple sec, couple of minutes. Okay, it's been running for about 10 minutes. Nice and cold, everything seems perfect. I'm very pleased. So now I just gotta put the cover back and the filter back on and I'm good to go for my trip to Tawas. So that's it. Uh, I hope this proves helpful to somebody who's having a similar problem. Like I said earlier, I was not able to find any videos of this particular problem on YouTube. So this may be the first one. Um, anybody with an older air conditioner, this one is 20 years old. Uh, you could have this problem at any, at any point really. So uh, your control board may look different. It may be in a different location but the general functions of every air conditioner is about the same. You should have very similar setup in the way it works. So if you're having a problem where your compressor won't turn off without cutting the power to the rig, then this may be your problem. So good luck to you if you find this to be the problem. Uh, as for everybody else, thank you for watching. Uh, check out facebook.com slash ramblinmichigander and we will see you in Tawas next week.